spicy chicken sandwiches. So I'm making a breading assembly line for the chicken. So I've got some flour, cayenne pepper, and salt, super simple. And then I've got some beaten eggs and I'm gonna add buttermilk and some hot sauce, Louisiana hot sauce, by the way. Louisiana. And then I just have a bowl of panko breadcrumbs, which makes them nice and crispy. And I'm gonna go ahead and bread the chicken first. So I have chicken cutlets, which is basically a chicken breast that's cut in half through the middle to make two thinner breasts. So first I'll dunk it in the flour. This is like a proper breading assembly line. Then into the egg buttermilk mixture, and then into the panko breadcrumbs, and then everything sticks. The flour that you put on the chicken first helps the breading stick. It just creates kind of a glue. Just so you know, in case anybody asks you to justify your breading actions. Okay, so look at this page. It's gonna be totally crispy. So I've got one chicken breast breaded. I'm gonna do the same thing to the other three. <sighs> All right, before I fry the chicken, I'm actually gonna make the spicy sauce that the chicken's gonna get dunked in. So, Louisiana hot sauce, this is where most of that bottle went. <coughs> and butter. Hello, it doesn't get any simpler than that, does it? And then I'll stir this together. And it's good to have this all ready to go. You don't really even need to heat it up. In fact, it's better if you don't, it sticks better that way. Okay, so the sauce is ready. So now it's time to fry the chicken. I have a mixture of oil and butter and I've got the skillet on about medium high heat. So I'm gonna put them in top side down so they'll be really pretty. And I'm gonna cook these on both sides until they're golden brown and totally cooked through. The chicken is looking great. So look how pretty. Crispy and lush, buttery and golden and beautiful. Okay, so taking them out of the skillet and then you guessed it. Take one of the chicken breasts and just plop it into the sauce. Mm. You wanna be careful not to be too rough on it so it doesn't completely fall apart. And then the chicken goes on the bun. Mm. And then I don't believe in a whole lot of stuff on top, except I do believe in pickles. I believe in this sandwich, I'll tell you that. Mm. Now I've got some butter and olive oil in the skillet very compelling footage there. <laughs> and I'm gonna get some chicken going. I need to get some salt. And I'm gonna season both sides of these little thin chicken cutlets. And I am making spinach artichoke chicken. So one thing you should know about me, if we ever start to get serious, is that I love spinach artichoke dip. It is a weakness of mine. It is all I want in life. It's super quick. You just make it in one pan and you can serve it with bread or salad or pasta or rice. Anything you want to serve on the side is fine. So I'm going to put the chicken in. They cook really fast. So you're, if you're into really fast cooking, which we are these days, aren't we gang? Oh, yeah. yeah. When we decide we're hungry, we want to eat 17 seconds later. So we can't have these great big chicken breasts that take 17 minutes to cook. No, no siree. So I'm gonna cook this chicken on both sides until it's done. And in the meantime, I'm gonna go find my bench scraper, the Parmesan cheese, and other things I forgot to lay out this morning. See you back here in a sec. Good? Good. Okay. The chicken is almost completely done. So I took the chicken out of the pan and here it is. And this is my absolute favorite way to cook a quick dinner. You make some kind of protein in the skillet with butter and oil. And then you use what's left in the pan to make a luscious sauce. So that starts with some red onion. Had to get my bench scraper. 
It was out in the pasture. The lad was using it to cut pipe. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, I don't think it could cut a pipe. You're right, Todd. Oh, and then I'm going to stir the onion and garlic around in the skillet. So, of course, part of spinach artichoke dip are the artichokes. And I'm just using artichokes in a jar. They're already chopped up. And you just want to quickly saute the artichokes and the onion and garlic. So, get ready to have some fun. I'm going to add a tiny splash, teeny tiny splash of white wine. <laughs> oh my, oh my, oh my. Tiny is a relative term. What's tiny to some is not tiny to others. What kind of white wine is it? Let's see. Oh, it is. Wait, I don't have my. Grigio. Peanut, peanut, peanut Grigio. Peanut Grigio. What is it, Todd? Peanut Grigio. <laughs> peanut. I'm going to add a splash of peanut Grigio. That's okay, Todd. You really don't need to know how to pronounce wine at this stage in your life. And it doesn't give the whole dish a really strong wine flavor. And if you don't want to use wine, you can just use a little bit of chicken broth or veggie broth. Anything goes. Now, of course, spinach artichoke dip is a creamy, luscious masterpiece. And I'm pouring in about three quarters of a cup of cream. It looks fantastic. And it's got kind of the flavor of the chicken that I cooked earlier. And because the skillet was so hot, this has thickened up pretty quickly. So now, I'm gonna add some Parmesan cheese. So cool no, I like to flick the cheese. I like to, f also this is a trick. It's called the flick trick. Or you just dump it upside okay. down. <laughs> You're just getting cheese on the counter. So. That's okay, you'll clean it up for me. <laughs> okay, so look Alex, the cheese melted almost instantly. So, don't look. No, Mom. No. Mom. You guys, Mom. it's gonna ruin it. I'm gonna tired of you hating on pimentos. It's gonna ruin then it. Stop putting them in the food. Okay, that's it. So we have some baby spinach leaves. It is a lot, but spinach shrinks. And I'm gonna squeeze in some lemon juice. So here we go. The chicken goes in, and you just kind of nestle it in there. And the great thing is you can scale this up if you have company over. It kind of looks elegant in the pan. Alex, you have to come get another close-up of this with the basil. I'm just tearing basil and letting it fall in. I'm so excited about this. <laughs> okay, come in here, Alex, and you can see it getting served. Oh, 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 oh. Wow. Look. The saucy truck right here. Mmm. And some then a little bit of bread. A little bit of extra basil torn over. Okay. All right. Okay, go. It's great. The white wine, the artichokes, the parmesan, everything but <laughs> the pimento. <laughs> I think it's, it's really great. Good. The butter, olive oil, onion, garlic, cream, white wine, parmesan, artichokes, spinach, chicken. It's all really great. <laughs> it all works together. Buffalo chicken tachos. I've just got frozen tots and I'm sprinkling on some chili powder and some cumin. Sprinkle that over and then I'll give these a toss. Frozen tots are pretty darn good as they are, but adding the chili powder and cumin really kind of elevates them. Okay, they are all coated. So I'm gonna bake these in the oven. They're gonna go onto a rimmed sheet pan. Now I'm gonna bake these in a 450 degree oven for about 35 minutes. So I'm gonna move forward with the buffalo chicken mixture. I just added some chicken breast that I cut into chunks. And I'm adding plenty of salt and pepper. I just had a little butter in the skillet. And I'm gonna start browning this before I move forward with the sauce. 
This kind of recipe is so much fun because you can serve it to teenagers after school, if they have friends over after a football game, it's perfect for that. Okay, the chicken is starting to brown, so I have some more things to add to the skillet. I've got some finely minced garlic and some sliced celery, which kind of ties into the buffalo chicken theme, and some sliced scallions. Okay. When Alex and Paige left for college, I swore things would never feel normal again. But we've kind of gotten a little rhythm. When the girls come home to visit, it's absolutely wonderful. And then when they go back, we settle right back into the man cave routine. <laughs> so now for the buffalo angle. I've got Louisiana hot sauce, and I'm gonna pour in a whole bottle. This is a great, quick way to make buffalo chicken. Of course, the classic is buffalo chicken wings. That takes a little more time. You have to fry the wings and then simmer them in the sauce. Okay, I think that chicken is just about done. And I think the tots are ready to come out of the oven. They should be golden and crisp. And yes, they are. While I'm here, I'm gonna turn the broiler on. So that'll be ready. So now I'm gonna assemble the tachos, but I wanna get the tots into sort of a group in the middle. You basically wanna make a pile. So first I'm gonna put on just a little bit of cheese. I'm using pepper jack, but you can use plain jack, sharp cheddar, a mix of Colby jack, and then this very saucy, spicy, tasty chicken goes on. I'm gonna grab a bigger spoon. <laughs> Okay, now you wanna get a bunch of chicken on top, but you also wanna get sauce all over the mix. It'll kinda of seep down into those crevices. <laughs> and then the rest of the cheese goes on. And this is going to be such a scrumptious pile of food right here. Okay, now the pan goes under the broiler just for two or three minutes until the cheese is melted and bubbly. This is not a dish you wanna make ahead of time. You make it right before you serve it. Now I'm gonna make a blue cheese ranch dressing to go with the tachos. You won't believe how easy this is. I've just got some prepared ranch and I'm spiking it with just a little bit of blue cheese. I'll give it a stir and add a little pepper and a little bit of salt. Ranch is basically a way of life with my teenagers. They eat ranch with pizza, chicken nuggets, french fries. I like to spike it with just a little bit of blue cheese to keep it consistent with buffalo chicken. Okay, that's the dressing. Pretty sure that cheese is melted by now. Let me take a look. Oh yes, it all makes sense now, doesn't it? <laughs> oh, what a fun dish, I love it. Now, of course, you can serve little ramekins with the ranch in it, but I kind of like to just go for it <laughs> and drizzle it on all over. It kind of makes a mess, but that never bothers me. <laughs> now, to garnish, I like to sprinkle on some celery leaves. So pretty and keeps driving home that buffalo chicken point. And then a whole bunch of green onions. Well, if you've never seen buffalo chicken tachos before in your life, that just changed. Here they are. Creamy lemon chicken. I mean, is there anything better than that in the world? So I seasoned some regular all-purpose flour with salt and pepper, and I'm just dredging some boneless, skinless chicken thighs really quickly, just a quick dunk, shake it off. This is not about creating a thick breading, it's just kind of lightly dredging in the flour mixture and it creates just a little bit of a golden crust without being sort of a complicated assembly line breading process. I love lemon chicken and this has spinach in it. Mm. And I'm just gonna serve it straight out of the skillet, which to me means easy in so many ways. First of all, when you serve things out of the skillet, you don't have to dirty up a whole separate platter. You don't have as many dishes to do at the end of the evening, which means you can sit down and stream your favorite, like, trashy TV show, which is my favorite leisure activity, let me tell you. Okay, so now, oh, this is for later. 
Okay, so I'm gonna let the chicken brown on the first side. It's gonna take about three and a half minutes, and then I'll turn it over and do the same thing to the second side. Don't go away. This is gonna happen in a flash. Okay, the chicken is all but done, and you really wanna cook it until it's just about finished cooking because it's not gonna have much of a chance once you move on with the sauce. So I'm gonna take it out of the skillet. Look at the crust on this. Mm. Isn't that pretty? I love dark meat, and for that reason, I am a chicken thigh girl. I'm a thigh girl, <laughs> not a breast girl. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sorry. I'm like a 12-year-old. Now, into the pan with all that chicken flavor and butter, I'm gonna add some minced garlic and just stir it around. You wanna get in here and look at this? Okie doke. So when the garlic really starts to get fragrant, I'm gonna grab the hard stuff. Oh, this is really gonna mess up the stove in a wonderful way. Mmm. Oh my, I'm gonna switch tongs. Actually, I'm gonna get a spatula. <laughs> Listen to this. I really wanna scrape that delicious stuff off the bottom of the skillet. And when you're browning chicken like this, it really does leave kind of a crust down there. And that is full of flavor, so you want it to go into the sauce. And this pan was so hot, it's really good to use like an enameled cast iron skillet for something like this because it just gets the pan so hot that it reduces that wine almost instantly. So next, cream. Now you have to come in and look. Cream. We can't miss these moments. This is the good stuff right here. These are the memories. These are the important memories. And then I zested a couple of lemons, and I'm adding the zest and the juice. So lemon chicken, anytime you make lemon anything, you always wanna add the zest. Because the juice does add flavor, but there's nothing like the zest of a lemon to really drive home the lemony point. Okay, and then Parmesan. Isn't this quick? It's coming together so fast. So fast. Paige, you so can make fast. this for your roommates in college. Yeah. Alex, you can make this for your roommate in life. You mean my <gasps> hubby? Yeah. Now come look at this. Oh. It's bubbling around the edges. So now is a good time to kind of turn the heat down a little bit and then grab the baby spinach. And it always cracks me up how much spinach you have to add to a sauce like this for it to really register. But that was probably about four or five ounces of spinach and then you just wanna stir it and toss it. It's good to have tongs for this, but Alex, come look. You're missing all the creamy magic. Look. Oh, this looks amazing. So then, you guessed it, the chicken goes in and it just kinda of gets nestled in among the spinach. So look at this, Alex that beautiful mm. lemony cream sauce with wine and the chicken is nestled in there. Now, if you want to, you can kind of spoon the sauce all over the chicken, but I kind of like leaving that beautiful crust visible. And then to garnish, you just grab some lemon wedges or lemon slices and put them here and there and everywhere. I had some basil. Oh, here it is. It's on the plate. <laughs> I've got some sliced basil, look. Oh, wow, this is pretty. I absolutely love this. Creamy lemon chicken in a skillet. Look, up close. Mm, that is gorgeous. You can serve it with pasta, you can serve it with bread, you can serve it by itself. The important thing is, serve it. I've got three big chicken breasts, and I'm gonna cook them in chicken broth, just boil them until they're done. These are bone in, so they're gonna be extra flavorful as they cook. I've got three chicken thighs. These are gonna cook up just great, and I'm gonna make a chicken pie out of them. Great mix of white meat and dark meat. It's gonna take this chicken about 45 minutes to an hour to cook all the way through. Who doesn't love chicken pie? I swear I've never met a single person who doesn't love it. I'm gonna turn all of that boiled chicken into a perfect chicken pie. I've been chopping up some veggies for the pie, and I'll get them into a skillet with some butter, starting with celery. I've also got some onion and some carrots, 
And I added a little something to this one that I don't normally use, and that's parsnips. I diced everything really fine because the kids don't really like huge chunks of veggies. I'll take veggies any way I can get them. I need to season the veggies with some salt and pepper. Sprinkle some in. I just need to stir these veggies around for about three minutes. The filling for the chicken pie needs to be really thick, so I'm gonna sprinkle in some flour, about a third a cup or so, and I'll stir it around and cook it for just a minute or so. I'm changing this chicken pie up from my normal one. I usually use a regular pie pastry whenever I make chicken pie. This time I'm taking a little bit of a shortcut and I'm gonna to top the pie with a sheet of puff pastry. It's looking really good. So now the liquid needs to go into the pan. And by liquid, I mean white wine for starters. I'll pour in about half a cup or so. The flavor of white wine in chicken pie is so divine. It's really subtle, there's not too much in there. Looks really good. So I'm gonna pour in chicken broth. It looks like a lot, but it's gonna thicken up. Some fresh thyme leaves, so as the sauce thickens, it'll take on that yummy thyme flavor. One more veggie, right out of the freezer. Got a bag of frozen green beans, and I'm just gonna put them in in their frozen state. I usually use frozen peas when I make chicken pot pie, but green beans are a nice change. Now I'm gonna grab some turmeric. I'm adding this for color more than anything else. It does add some nice flavor. It's really golden, and a little goes a long, long way. You don't wanna over turmeric anything, because you'll wind up with a bright yellow dish. If you just add a little bit, it adds a nice golden tinge and it just makes whatever you're cooking look that much more delicious. And it worked. I wanna dive into this and eat it right now. But I've got one more ingredient to add, and it's probably the most decadent ingredient known to man, heavy cream. Not a lot, just a little. It just does something to this filling. It makes it a little bit thicker, definitely more creamy, definitely more rich. The only thing it needs is the chicken. I'll drop all of this shredded chicken in, and I am really, really stuffing it in there. I like a super meaty chicken pie. And I'll fold it into the sauce. Honestly, you don't even need the crust with this. I could just serve this up in a bowl, call it chicken stew. <laughs> that filling is perfect. I'm gonna be really careful and go slow. While I do this, let me tell you how I'm gonna finish it up and serve it up tomorrow. An hour before dinner, I'll pull the pie out of the fridge, brush the rim of the dish with an egg wash, put a sheet of thawed puffed pastry on top, press down the edges of the pastry so it sticks to the sides, then egg wash the top too. Then I cook it for an hour at 375, and everyone in my household is gonna fight over that first big spoonful. Look at that crispy pastry on top. And all it needs on the side is a great green salad. I'm making sheet pan quesadillas. I've got big tortillas, and I'm gonna make each one overlap and overhang. So I'm gonna start with four big ones, and then two on the end like this, on either end. Okay, so you see where I'm going with this? And then one right in the middle to cover the bottom. And then I have all of these ingredients to add. First, two cups of cheddar cheese, and then rotisserie chicken. It's a great shortcut ingredient. Okay, for seasoning, good taco seasoning. Green chilies, just sprinklage. You don't even have to drain. Black olives, I'm kind of on an olive kick, to be honest with you. And then roasted corn, frozen. I let it thaw so it didn't have that iciness. I didn't want it to make the quesadilla watery. And then I'm gonna do spoonfuls of salsa, just here and there and everywhere. Okay, and then the rest of the cheese, of course. And now it's about folding in the sides, okay? So that's one side. 
and then you pull the other ones in. Pull in the ends like this. Isn't this cool? It yeah, is. That is cool. And then to fill in this spot, there's one tortilla left. And then you definitely want to generously brush the top with butter. There we go. You can't just put it in like this. You take a second sheet pan and you actually press it on top. Oh. Okay, so it kind of presses it closed. Oh. Now you're talking. Let's go to the oven. 450 degrees, 20 minutes. See you back here then. Okay. You ready? I'm ready. This is monumental momentous. Whoa. Wow. Look at that thing. Is that amazing or what? It's awesome. I'm going to use a pizza cutter because I think that's going to be the best method. Oh, it looks great. Yum. Oh my gosh, there's cheese everywhere. Look, look at that. Oh, boy, boy. How good does that look? And then, as I am wont to do, I'll add some sour cream and sprinkle on some. Avocado? <laughs> I'm just sprinkling avocado at this point. <laughs> and then hot sauce, my fave. Use your fave, whichever that is. Look at this, you guys. And then some cilantro, sprinkle over, some lime juice. I thought I had this whole quesadilla game figured out. I was wrong. This is a game changer. After the big day of cleaning up our homestead, the family is gonna be really, really hungry. We're gonna have a big picnic and I'm taking fried chicken. I love fried chicken. My family really loves fried chicken. And it really is the perfect picnic type food because it doesn't have to be piping hot when you eat it. It's just as good room temperature as it is hot. I'm gonna start by making the coating for the fried chicken. I've got five cups of flour and I'll just add a whole bunch of seasonings. Season salt, of course. And then a little bit of paprika. I'm gonna add some cayenne pepper, not too much, just enough to add a little heat. Some ground thyme, and then plenty of salt and pepper. That looks pretty well seasoned. So I'll mix the flour together. Now this is a little trick I learned a long, long time ago from a fellow homeschooling mom. I've got a mixture of milk and buttermilk and I'll use a fork and just drizzle it in. And as I drizzle it into the dry ingredients, I'll just mix it until the liquid makes little clumps throughout the flour. That just gives the fried chicken a great texture, a little bit of extra crispiness. Okay, that looks pretty good. I think I'll stop there. All right, now I've got two whole cut up fryer chickens and they've been soaking in buttermilk for a few hours. I'm just gonna put a few pieces in the breading and then just toss them around. Use my fingers and sort of press the breading onto the pieces. I soaked the chicken in buttermilk in the fridge for several hours, but I actually took the bowl out of the fridge about 30 minutes ago, because I didn't want it to be ice cold when I put it into the oil. Okay, I think I'll do a couple more pieces. I'm gonna fry them in batches of five. I don't wanna crowd the skillet, so I'll just bread enough to start frying right now. Okay. That's good. Now I've been heating up some oil in an iron skillet. I've got a thermometer and it reads 360 degrees, which is exactly the temperature I want. So I'll just drop the pieces of chicken in. It's not enough oil to completely deep fry the chicken pieces. It's about an inch and a half of oil. I just want them to sit in there, not float around. All right, I'll just get them in there really carefully. I usually try to put the skin side down all right, got them in there. Now I'll just move them around just a little bit with the tongs, make sure they're not sticking to the pan. Okay, perfect. Now I'm gonna cover the pan and let them cook for about five to seven minutes, and then I'll uncover it, flip the pieces, let them finish cooking for another three to five. So while they cook away, I'll keep bread in the chicken. Now while I work on the chicken, Lad and the kids are still down at the house. There's still a little bit of cleaning to do, and a whole lot of wood to gather. We're gonna have a big bonfire later, and I'm looking forward to that. The first batch of chicken is done. Oh, yum. 
so I'll get to work on cooking the rest. It won't take very long. Okay, the last of the chicken is done. Turn off the heat, and I'll get it out. It looks gorgeous. I always marvel that every batch of chicken turns out looking slightly different. Fried chicken is a living, breathing thing. Okay, now I'm actually gonna take the smaller pieces, stick them on a plate, and just set them aside. They're fully cooked, they've fried enough. Couple more small ones. Okay, now for these bigger pieces, I'm gonna put them into a 350 degree oven for about 15 minutes or so, and that'll just make sure all the chicken is fully cooked. All right, now I'm gonna clean all this up, then I'll pack up the food and head home for dinner. Missy's my sister-in-law. So I did something I hardly ever do. I called Missy and said, come over for lunch. She and I never get together on our own, and today was the perfect opportunity. So I'm gonna whip up a delicious chicken taco salad just for the two of us. I've been seasoning two boneless, skinless chicken breasts, and I'm gonna get them into the pan. This chicken taco salad is one of my 16-minute meals. It's really, really fast, really easy, and so flavorful. I'll sprinkle the other side, then I won't have to touch the chicken with my hands. I'm just using prepared taco seasoning, and it's great for really quick meals. There's a lot of flavor. You don't have to take the time to mix different spices. It works really well. Okay, I'm letting this cook in oil and butter to give it great color and flavor. The chicken's gonna cook about four minutes per side. I'm using bottled ranch to make a spicy ranch dressing for the taco salad. I'll start with about a quarter cup or so, and then I'll spoon in couple tablespoons of jarred salsa. All right, now just to give the dressing a little bit of freshness, the cilantro. Missy doesn't live very far away, but we both get so busy, we hardly ever get together, just the two of us. So we're gonna have so much fun. Now the chicken should be ready to turn. Ooh, looks great, nice and flavorful. I'll just put it on a plate, looks yummy. Now it's just gonna rest for a little bit. Now I have two ears of fresh corn and I'm gonna grill the corn, but before I put it on the grill pan, I'm just gonna roll it around in the skillet that I cooked the chicken in, and it's just gonna get some of that yummy flavor on the outside. Okay, the corn is ready. It's got a little bit of color, a few grill marks on the outside. And now I'll just slice the corn kernels right off the cob. They're not too hot to handle. I love fresh corn because then you can control how much you cook it. I like corn to be pretty crunchy, not totally raw, but not totally cooked either. Now I'll just grab the chicken, dice it up. It looks really, really good. Everything in this salad is sort of bite-sized. That's what I love about it. Every bite is fun. It has a lot of different things going on. I'm so looking forward to getting together with Missy. And of course, we love getting together with the whole family, but sometimes we just wanna kinda get over in a corner, have some girl talk. Okay, everything's ready. Now I just need to assemble the salad. I've got a whole bunch of shredded green leaf lettuce. I literally shaved it with a really sharp knife. Now I'll sprinkle on the diced chicken. And then I diced up just some Roma tomatoes and then the grilled corn, delicious. I'll sprinkle on some pepper jack cheese, sliced green onions, avocado. Well, Hello. speak of the devil. Hi, Missy. You're here. I'm here. How weird for us <laughs> just to get together for lunch. No kids, no husbands? No. I'm just finishing our salad, so I just gotta put the oh. dressing on. There's tomatoes healthy, healthy. in there. Did you say healthy? Mm -hmm. Well, I'm gonna sprinkle a few chips on, if you don't mind. <laughs> the star of the show is a chicken tortilla casserole. It's really hearty and just dripping with all the things my family loves. I've just got some onions in the skillet with a little olive oil, and I just threw them in to get them a little soft before I move forward. I love this casserole, it's really hearty. It's actually a version of a casserole my friend Pastor Ryan used to make. It was sort of a Mexican lasagna. It's just full of deliciousness. All right, the onions are already getting nice and soft. So I'll add in some garlic, 
several cloves and I just minced it really fine. And then I'll add some spices. A couple of teaspoons of chili powder, a teaspoon of paprika, beautiful color, and a teaspoon of ground cumin, which I love to put in so many of my Tex-Mex recipes. Now I'll just stir it and I want those spices to really coat the onions. Lad's out there burning the ranch with his brother Tim. They're splitting up because there's so much ground to cover and they always seem to turn it into a competition to see who can cover the most ground. Everything's a competition with those two. Now the onions are all coated in spices and they're looking great. Now I have a big pile of chopped tomatoes and they just go right in. I don't want the tomatoes to completely fall apart, and that's why I wait until the onions have started to soften before I add them in. Now, the tomato mixture could not look any more delicious, and it smells divine. I'm gonna go ahead and get it out of the pan. This adds such amazing flavor to the casserole. I just love it. Now, I'm gonna crank the heat up on the stove, drizzle in a little olive oil, and I'll move on with the next step. There are a lot of steps and a lot of ingredients to this casserole, but nothing is complicated at all. I've got some boneless, skinless chicken breasts, and I just cut them into bite-sized pieces. And I'm gonna season them with the same seasonings I used for the onion mixture. Little chili powder, little bit of paprika, and a little cumin. Now I've just got to stir the chicken until it's totally cooked through and deep golden brown. This chicken could not look any more glorious. I'm gonna move forward and make a sauce out of this. And all I need to do is add a little water. And then I'll just stir the chicken around. Now the sauce just needs to bubble up and reduce a bit. That'll take a couple of minutes. So I'm gonna use that time to puree the enchilada sauce that's been cooling. I just sauteed garlic in olive oil with some finely chopped red bell pepper and onion for a couple of minutes. Then added the spices, a whole bunch of chili powder, some cumin, cayenne, salt, pepper, and cooked it for another two minutes. Then I added some flour to thicken it, cooked it for a minute, stirred in chicken stock, chicken bouillon cubes, a couple of cans of tomato sauce, some water, brought it to a boil and reduced it by about a third and let it cool. Now the blender steps in. The sauce gets poured in after it's cooled. The machine goes on and in a matter of seconds, it's pureed to delicious smoothness. Now you never wanna blend this hot. You wanna make sure it's totally cool because otherwise you might have a mess on your hands. Now this sauce is actually for the assembly of the casserole, so I'll leave it there and I'll check on the chicken. It looks so good. It just keeps getting better and better. Now to add to the chicken, I've got some pinto beans and kidney beans. I just drained them and rinsed them and they'll just make the filling of the casserole that much more hearty. I'll just pour half of the jar of salsa verde all over the bottom of this casserole dish and it's more of a lasagna pan. It needs to hold a lot of food. Now I'll just shake it so that it's totally distributed. Building the casserole is the fun part. Now you can use flour tortillas, but I like to use corn. They just give the most amazing flavor to the casserole. And I'll start with a layer of six. They'll overlap and cover the bottom of the pan just perfectly. Now I've just got some plain cooked rice, just regular long grain white rice. And I'm just putting it in a single layer on top of the tortillas. Nothing fancy about this. Now what makes it fancy is this delicious tomato mixture I made. And I'll just sprinkle it over the rice. Oh, the mixture of the rice with this tomato yumminess. Mm-mm. Now I'll just use the spoon to kind of push it around. Okay, that's all smoothed out. Now I drained the can of corn and I'm just gonna sprinkle it over the tomato mixture. This is such an easy recipe. You can use frozen corn if that's what you got. If you have a little extra time, you can shave kernels off the corn and use fresh. Anything works. All right, now it's time for this delicious chicken and bean mixture. It's been cooling and it looks so good. 
This is adding all the protein to the dish. I'll just sprinkle it on and spread it out. I just love casseroles. Something about them just say home to me. Now, any self-respecting Tex-Mex casserole has to have tons of cheese. So I'm gonna grate some Cheddar Jack. You okay, know, grated all the cheese. Ooh, I have a nice big pile. That's just what I wanted. Now, before I put the cheese on, I'll grab this yummy enchilada sauce, and I'll just pour on a nice layer. Mmm, mmm. I'm gonna make sure it gets in the cracks. And then I'll add the rest of the jar of salsa verde. Just kind of go in between. Ooh, I love this mix. And then half of the cheese goes on. I love putting all the cheese toward the top because as it bakes in the oven, it just drips down into the cracks and makes it so gooey. All right, and then a second layer of corn tortillas. These sort of hold the whole casserole together. It has a base and a top. Now I'll end with a good layer of the homemade enchilada sauce. I'm not gonna use all of this for this casserole, but this sauce keeps in a jar in the fridge. And then the rest of the cheese. <laughs> you have got to have a hearty appetite when you eat this dish. All right, the casserole is all assembled. Now I'm just gonna cover it with foil and keep it in the fridge until I head home. Then tonight, all I have to do is bake it at 375 degrees for 20 minutes, take the foil off, and cook it for another 15 to 20 minutes. Then when it's hot and bubbly, it's done. I'll let it sit a while so it'll hold up together when I serve it. Then everyone gets a great big helping with some sour cream on the side and a sprig of cilantro. Now that is gonna make one delicious dinner tonight. Now for dinner tonight, I'm making chicken mozzarella pasta. It is one of my family's favorite dinners. It's hearty and delicious, and best of all, it takes no time at all to make. Now I'm cooking some bite-sized chicken pieces. These are boneless, skinless breasts, and I cut them into pretty small pieces because that'll make them cook a little bit quicker. Sprinkle in some salt and pepper. Okay, now I'll let the chicken start to cook, and I'll get some of the other ingredients ready. I'm gonna dice up an onion. Okay, now I'll grab a couple of cloves of garlic. Garlic always makes anything a little bit more delicious. Okay, I got the onions and garlic all ready. Now the chicken, it looks like, is ready to come out. Now I'll turn the heat down just a little bit and I'll put the onions right into the pan with all that wonderful chicken flavor. I love making sauces like this where the meat goes into the pan first and then it just flavors everything you put in there after that. Okay, now I'll just stir around the onions and garlic. Okay, now it's time to put the pasta into the water and get it cooking. It's boiling and ready to go. I'm doing penne pasta, but of course you can do rigatoni, pretty much any kind of pasta you have in your pantry. I'll move on with the sauce. The onions and garlic are already starting to turn brown. Now part of what makes this dish so easy and so quick, I use really good quality marinara sauce right out of the jar. I use it all the time. It's a really delicious shortcut ingredient. Now I do want it to have a little bit more of a liquidy texture, so I've got just the thing. I'll reach into my pasta pot, borrow a little of the hot water, and just put it right into the skillet. The pasta will never know it's gone. Now to give it a little bit of a kick, I add some crushed red pepper flakes. Now I'll just stir that in. And the last thing to do is just add the chicken back into the sauce and it's gonna simmer, finish cooking, make the sauce even more delicious. It already looks good. Okay. Now to give it a little green, I'll mince up some parsley. Okay, I'll just mince up the parsley, sprinkle it right in. All right, now the sauce just has to simmer for about seven to eight minutes. 
Now I've got one thing to add to the sauce and it really elevates this dish from just a basic chicken marinara pasta. Fresh mozzarella. Now I'm cutting it into cubes, not very big pieces. I'll just cut it into sticks. They're about half an inch square. I'll just sprinkle it right in. This mozzarella is a pretty soft cheese, so it's gonna soften really quickly, but I don't want it to totally melt. I still want it to stay in pretty nice chunks. It's just gonna take two to three minutes for the cheese to be perfect. All right, the pasta is done. I love these pasta pots with the built-in colander. Now I'll put it into a great big bowl. I love these huge pasta bowls. And then I'll drizzle the pasta with a little bit of olive oil. Now I like to put a nice layer of Parmesan shavings on the pasta before I put the sauce on. It just adds a nice layer of deliciousness. I'm just using a vegetable peeler. Okay, I think that's a good amount of Parmesan. Now give the sauce a stir. Ooh, the mozzarella is melting, it looks perfect. And I'm just gonna pour this right over the pasta. A lot faster than spooning it. Wow, and the cheese is gonna continue to soften. Okay, now I wanna add some green to the top and some flavor. So I've got some beautiful basil. Now I just stack up the leaves real roughly. I'm not trying to be precise here. This is a 16 minute meal after all. And I'll just roll them up and just slice them pretty thin. All right, boys. And with that, dinner is done.